Hello and welcome to our discussion on solubility and solubility curves and solubility data. Um, first, we have to understand that when, when we're measuring solubility, we have to have some parameters we always measure by. Um, generally, in this course, we're going to dissolve substances that are solid in water. Um, and we're going to measure the solubility in terms of a certain amount of water. Usually it's 100 grams, which because the density of water is 1, is also 100 milliliters of water. And we're going to measure that solubility at given temperatures along the way. And we're going to see how that uh, temperature change impacts the solubility in that 100 grams of water. But first we have to define some terms and look at some things. First term we need to talk about is what is a saturated solution. A saturated solution contains the maximum amount of solute for a given amount of solvent at a constant temperature. An unsaturated solution contains less solute than a saturated solution would have. So this means that if you uh, add more solute particles to that solution, those particles will also dissolve to a point. A supersaturated solution is a solution that contains more solute than it should be able to hold at a constant temperature. We create a supersaturated solution by saturating it and then slowly cooling it, uh, which changes the saturation point while the solution remains intact. Um, not all solutions can be supersaturated very easily. Some are uh, more favorable than others to be supersaturated. Um, crystallization will occur with agitation, maybe, and sometimes you can add a seed crystal which basically means a crystal of any kind um, provides uh, a little bit of order to the uh, solution that's supersaturated and the rest of the solution will then um, crystallize and we have a little video that shows that this is a solution right now that's it's clear as you can see there's some audio and you can see some action in the background they're going to drop a seed crystal in to the solution watch what happens actually it's on a this it's on a stick and you see the crystals forming, the spicules forming at 360 degrees around, and the solution crystallizes in a matter of minutes. We'll actually see this in class also. We'll do it a little differently, but you'll be able to see it repeatedly. Um, this happens because the solution um, was cooled after it was saturated, and that changes um, the solubility of that salt in the solution at that volume. Um, so this indicates that the solution that they put that seed crystal into must have been supersaturated. This would not happen in a saturated or unsaturated solution. So this is some tabular data uh, that we're going to be putting into graphs on the next few slides. But first, it's it's important that we're able to decode this um, as it as it is like this because not all on all. Not all questioning types are going to be graphic. They're going to be sometimes data tables. So what you have in this data table is solubility of some common substances uh, in water at various temperatures. And if you look down the list, just you'll see ionic compounds. And then you'll see sugar, which is a covalently bound polar covalent compound. And then you'll see some gases or some uh, covalent compounds that are commonly gases, hydrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide. And then you see four um, benchmark temperatures to put the... Um, to uh, measure these the impact of solubility on and if you look at generally speaking at the ionic compounds across this table you see a trend okay so that's kind of this this these uh, six on top you see as temperature increases generally you see the the uh, uh, solubility of these substances increase that's not always true for all ionic compounds and we'll get more into that uh, a little bit in this course and more in AP chemistry um, if you look at sugar that's true also and if you're familiar with making sugary drinks that come out of a packet you're probably used to the idea that if you heat up your solution a little bit you can get more sugar to dissolve conversely if you look at these three gases at bottom most notably initially you see it there's a very small mass of gases that dissolve in water it's a meaningful mass um, because this is actually you know you, your body right now is circulating a fluid that contains dissolved oxygen and dissolved carbon dioxide and without it you'd be dead so this is a meaningful concentration, but what you should see is that as you increase the temperature of a solution, the solubility of gases decreases. And when you get to water's boiling point, you've effectively boiled out any gases that would have been dissolved in it. Um, so we need to take note of these common uh, trends and be able to apply them uh, to real life chemistry situations. So why do the last three substances in the table decrease solubility as the temperature increases? Well, because they're gases, and as you give gases energy, as we learned in the gases unit, the kinetic energy of the particles increases. If the kinetic energy of the gas particles increases, you're essentially increasing the probability that they're able to escape the solution. 
Uh, describe a solution of 45 grams of potassium chloride dissolved in 100 grams of water at 50 Celsius. Okay. At 50 Celsius, we scroll down to potassium chloride, and there's our solubility. We would say we should be able to dissolve about 42.6 grams of potassium chloride into that solution uh, before it began to uh, fail to dissolve any further. Now, I want to point something out here, and we'll look at it graphically too. Just because you add more potassium chloride in doesn't mean it's going to dissolve and you're going to get a supersaturated solution. That's not how it works. To supersaturate, you have to increase the temperature and then allow it to cool. So um, putting 45 grams in would not yield a supersaturated solution. It would yield a saturated solution with extra potassium chloride that remained in crystalline form at the base of your container. Number three, describe a solution of 222 grams of silver nitrate at 100 grams of water at 20 Celsius. So silver nitrate's here, and that's exactly the solubility of silver nitrate at that temperature. So we would say that would make you, theoretically, a perfectly saturated solution. Which solute has the highest solubility at 20 Celsius? Well, that would be the greatest mass you could dissolve at that temperature, and that looks like it would be sugar, sucrose. And then at 50 Celsius, at 50, we're just looking down the line, it would be silver nitrate. So silver nitrate has a dramatic increase in solubility as you increase temperature. More dramatic than anything else on this uh, uh, list. Maybe potassium chlorate is pretty dramatic too. Um, but uh, generally speaking, these are trends you should expect to see. That doesn't mean they're absolute. There are substances that do not um, increase solubility with increased temperature. So let's put our terms on the graphic. What we're going to be seeing in solubility curves is a y-axis that's solubility. Remember mass uh, usually in uh, grams or in milligrams per thousand for 100 milliliters of water. And then on the x-axis, temperature in Celsius. The line you're going to see drawn is solubility relative to temperature. So this line is exactly saturation at whatever temperature you're looking at. So the red dot is our saturated solution. So if we are able to graph or able to measure a solution uh, that we plan on our line exactly, then it's saturated. If we plot a solution uh, situation where it's below the line, it's an unsaturated solution. And if it's above the line, that means it's dissolved more than it should be able to dissolve, then it's a supersaturated solution. So let's move forward. First, let's talk about gases. Generally speaking, what happens to gases is we, is we increase temperature, solubility decreases. Is this a direct or inverse relationship? So increasing temperature has a decreasing relationship on your metric then that's an inverse uh, relationship. As temperature increases, solubility decreases. The four gases in this graph all behave similarly. As temperature increases, gas solubility decreases. As gas gases can gain kinetic energy, they overcome external pressures and escape the system. So there's a lots of different factors that we're kind of ignoring in terms of gases, and that definitely does include the, the pressure outside the solution. So normal atmospheric pressure is what allows these things to be soluble at room temperature. Keep that in mind. Which solute dissolves best when the water is 10 Celsius? So what we do is we keep in mind we have solubility, grams of salt, and 100 mils of water. This can have subtle variations, so please be mindful of what your axis says. Temperature in Celsius is common. Um, so at 10 Celsius, which solute do we see is most soluble? And it looks like sodium nitrate is our answer. Which solute has the lowest solubility at 60 Celsius? That's going to be cesium sulfate. So this is an example of an ionic solid that has a decreasing solubility um, as temperature increases. And the reason for that has to do with the energy of the system. This is a salt that requires energy in order to, uh, sorry, releases energy when it dissolves. So if you increase temperature, you basically um, put a lot of energy into the surroundings and the salt won't dissolve as easily. It needs to release energy while all these other salts tend to absorb energy when they dissolve. How much potassium chloride dissolved in 100 mils of water that's 45 Celsius? So we go to 45 Celsius. We go up our, 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 uh, our graphic looking for potassium chloride. And saturation looks like it's just above 40 uh, grams. Um, and we're approximating. You should notice there's no sig figs here. So we're, we're going to be approximating, and when you don't really have that great of sig figs, then sometimes it's just one sig fig. We're not going to um, needle you uh, for what would be the difference in an insignificant digit. So this is somewhere between 40 and 50. Uh, any reasonable number less than 45 should be good. Um, how much potassium nitrate will dissolve in 500 mils of water that's 45 Celsius? 
So keep in mind that our, our y-axis is per 100 mils of water. So we would need to multiply whatever value we have by 5 because this says how much is going to dissolve in 500 mils of water. So let's go to the potassium nitrate curve at 45 Celsius. Here we go. It's the green. And this is about 45. We see 75 times 5 would be, what, 350 plus, I don't even know. Let's see what it says. There we go. So if we say we have 75 dissolve at that temperature, 70 um, times 500 would be 350. Five, uh, sorry, 70 times 5 would be 350, and 5 times 5 would be more, 25 more. So that's, that's 75 times 5. 375 grams would dissolve in 500 mils of water at 45 Celsius. If you stir 50 grams potassium chlorate in 100 mils of water at 70 Celsius, will all of it dissolve? So our potassium chlorate curve is this brown curve here. At 70 Celsius, we should be able to put exactly, roughly 30 grams in. So if we put 50 grams in, will all of it dissolve? No. 20 grams of it, you would expect to fall down to the bottom of the solution. It would not supersaturate. To supersaturate it, you could put your 50 grams in, raise it up over 90 Celsius, and then allow it to cool and hope that it doesn't crystallize on its own. If you get it back down to uh, 70 Celsius, then it's possible that it could stay supersaturated. But like I said, agitation, sometimes um, solutions just don't want to supersaturate it because it's, the, the crystal structure becomes so favorable uh, that it just happens spontaneously. But uh, we'll, we'll look at that um, grossly in class together. If you stir 100 grams of sodium nitrate in 100 mils of water at 20 Celsius, how many grams of it will not dissolve? Okay, sodium nitrate, 20 Celsius, to start there. Sodium nitrate is this green curve again. At 20 Celsius, we would expect 30 grams to dissolve. Okay, so if we put 100 grams, how much won't dissolve? Oh, I apologize. I must have misread something here. Sodium nitrate. I looked at potassium nitrate. Yeah, Sodium nitrate way up here is this dark red. And at 20 Celsius, we would expect, say, 88, a little less than 90 to dissolve. So there we have that 12 grams. If you put 100 grams in, this, this difference here would not dissolve. How many grams of sodium chloride will dissolve in 200 mils of water at 90 Celsius? So sodium chloride is this baby blue color here, and we would expect about 40 grams to dissolve at 90 Celsius. So how many grams would dissolve in 200 mils? Remember, the y-axis is 100 mils. We would double that value, so we would expect 80 grams to dissolve in 200 mils of water. Finally, you have 80 grams potassium nitrate in 100 mils of water at 40 Celsius. Unsaturated, saturated, or supersaturated. Okay, so we find our potassium nitrate curve. It's the green curve, 40 Celsius, 80 grams are dissolved. Now, this is not saying you put 80 grams in. You did this. Okay, so you successfully did this. The situation is real. So if you put 80 grams in, you're above your, your saturation curve uh, to the left um, of it. And so you're saying that you've got 80 grams when you should only be able to dissolve roughly 65. So it's super saturated. If you have 50 mils of water as solvent, how many grams of sodium chloride would dissolve in 100 Celsius water? At 100 Celsius, our solubility for sodium chloride is still about 100, or sorry, still about 40. So if you were with 50 mils, then it would be half of that value, roughly 20 grams of water and 50, sorry, grams of um, uh, sodium chloride in 50 mils of water. How many grams calcium chloride are needed to saturate 100 mils of water at 20 Celsius? Okay. So calcium chloride is this green, green curve, or sorry, green, orange curve here. Um, 20 Celsius, we would expect about 77, um, 75, good answer. So generally you see that we have lots of different ways you can be questioned. You need to be very diligent and mindful of what your axis says relative to what your question says. And generally just gain experience by looking through questions of this type. This concludes Solutions Video 4. You should have taken high quality notes. Please rewatch any portion of this video as you need. Come to class with any questions you might have.